under this and to be honest with you we're about 300 yards back from the line so we're safe back here why don't we step out here a little bit might be a little easier for us we don't need to be under this shelter anyhow well welcome i am sergeant uh, clarence mccafferty squad leader machine gun squad company d 261st infantry regiment 65th infantry division our division is part of the united states third army George uh, Patton, commanding officer. Now, uh, my uh, commanding officer of the 261st, Colonel Caraway, has asked me to answer any questions you might have and spend some time with you this evening uh, as we await pulling out. You can hear some of the noise down below. We're about 300 yards back from the uh, banks of the Danube, but the noise you hear is our uh, 265th Combat Engineers Battalion, and they are moving into bridge crossings. I suspect any time in the next day or two, we'll probably be crossing the Danube. If you look over on the banks over there, you're gonna see the town of Koffelberg, Germany. I suspect that'll probably be our next objective. So, we will wait here until we get orders. Let me share a little bit with you about the 65th. Our commanding uh, general is Major General Reinhardt. We were activated in 1943, and we are known as the Battle Axe Division. Now let me share a little bit with you about myself. I grew up in a small town, central Ohio, about a mile outside of town. It's called Carroll, Ohio. It's just to the south and east of Columbus, Ohio. My family lived in a, or lives in a small tenant house at the corner of Kaufman Road and Winchester Road, owned on uh, by Mr. Clarence Benson on his farm. Growing up, uh, my mother and father are Harley and Ida McCafferty. Three brothers and three sisters. My oldest brother, Walter, he, uh, he joined the service a little while back. He's been in over a year now. We got some word last year that he had been injured in July, had wounded hand and arm, but he's since returned to his group and has been fighting. The rest of my brothers and sisters are Dolores and Gladys, Clara, Roger and Helen. Now, most of these boys around here you see were all raised on farms for the most part, and I was no different. I spent a lot of my years with my good friend Neil Benson, and as long as uh, we were big enough to, we'd be out doing our chores, pitching hay, and doing things of that nature. We had uh, summer a couple years ago, we borrowed Neil's brother's truck because he was already in the service. I am recording. Every day that yes. summer, we hauled peas from White's farm we would have to haul him over to Elmer Miller because he had the only hauling machine in town. And then from there, we'd take him to the cannery in Canal Winchester. I'll tell you, I'm really thankful for Neil, too, because if it wasn't for him, I would have never got out of the state of Ohio until I was drafted into service. A couple summers back, Neil and his family invited me to go visit their family in St. Louis, Missouri. Now, back home, I was always called Cabbage. <laughs> and uh, the name stuck after one of my teachers asked me what my favorite food was. I said cabbage and it just stuck. And uh, I'm not so sure my brothers and sisters minded, but uh, the name seemed to stick with them too. I graduated in 43 from Carroll High School. I always did a real good job with my grades, but I probably enjoyed playing baseball and basketball more than anything else. After graduation, I worked for a few months with the uh, Fairfield Seed and Grain Company and uh, was drafted in uh, January of last year. But before I went in, I uh, went ahead and put in for a one-month deferment, which I was granted, and I took that time to spend with my girlfriend, Mary Mae Asbell. And uh, before I shipped off to Fort Blanding, Florida for my basic training, I proposed to Mary Mae. So as you can imagine, I don't plan on staying around here long. As soon as this is over, I'm ready to go back home, start a family and be with Mary May and see the rest of my family. Now, all of us in the 261st trained in Camp Shelby, Mississippi. We were there for about 10 or 11 months. Then we shipped overseas and landed in the Normandy region. I'll tell you, when we got to Normandy in January, it was not a nice place to be. It was cold and muddy rainy and snowy. I know it's nothing as bad as what the boys had it in the bulge, but it sure wasn't enjoyable either. But things got better as the rations started to come in and our supplies started to come in. 
I'll tell you, I never turned down any KP duty because I knew I could eat all I wanted when I was on KP. Now, uh, I try to ride home as much as I can, just to let Mary May and my mother know that I'm okay over here. Usually when I ride home, I ask them to send things like some warm uh, socks or gloves or food if they can get it in. I usually try to let them know how we're being taken care of over here. One time I told them about the fried chicken dinner we had and the potatoes fried in butter and the breads and jams and the coffee and the, the uh, strawberry desserts. I didn't tell mother about the German farmer that wasn't too, had we too uh, happy when we took that from him. <laughs> now last month I, uh, I did send home about $81 to mom. She's going to put it in a savings account for me when I get home. And uh, I also didn't tell her that $40 that came from a poker match that I'd won. <laughs> I try to keep, uh, keep the letters positive. We talk about the American Red Cross when they come up to the front line and bring us warm coffee and donuts and chewing gum and candy and cigarettes and things of that nature. Well, uh, the battle axe uh, was put into co combat in uh, early March, just a few weeks back. Our first objective was to move from Normandy across northern France to re relieve the 26th Infantry Division, which was the Yankee Division at that time. After we relieved them, our first combat objective was to uh, uh, enter the Western Front. We took the southern flank and secured the Sarland region. After about four days, we had broke through the Siegfried Line and the German defenses there. By the end of March, we have uh, crossed through the Rhine and have been making our way through uh, Germany into the region we're in now in Bavaria and overlooking the Danube. Like I said, I suspect we'll be moving out soon. So I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have private craft escort you back to the headquarters or I'll answer any questions you might have. Well, Sergeant, many of your brothers and sisters are here and your nieces and nephews and I understand. cousins. <laughs> and we would like them to introduce themselves with their name and tell them how they're related to you. And um, we would like to start with Mr. Texan over there. <laughs> Uncle. Uncle. I understand he's already introduced himself. <laughs> I, I, I knew you were definitely <laughs> and I'm Sister Dolores. Ah, you shared a lot of the information. Yeah. I hope I did it. You did an excellent job. Brother Roger. Roger. Sister Gladys. Hi, Gladys. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. This is my husband. Oh. Thank you guys for coming out. And wait a minute, we have some more guys. Yep. <laughs> That's his sister. Was I right about Walter? He yeah. Was, he was injured? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then do we know what happened after that? He went to a hospital in England. Okay, did he go back in to fight? No. Alright, well I messed up. Okay. Worked for the post office. He worked for the post office and the railroad. Then he went to Texas. I'll add yeah, that in the next one. Then he came to Texas. <laughs> and also, there was, he has two brothers and four sisters, okay? You had three and three. Two brothers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> three and yeah, you four. Got the name. Yeah, you got the names, okay. Three and four. But I only had three brothers and three sisters. No. That's four. Okay. No, you got two. two. And four. You got two. Yeah. Two and three. Yeah. I will make the adjustment. Okay. <laughs> Sergeant McCafferty, it's an honor to be with you. It's an honor to be with the McCafferty family. If I can just have them over here to myself for just a moment. But I'd also like to say you couldn't have had a better a better young man to portray your esteemed relative Very good. Dr. Scott Hammond. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
don't know. You want to go to the tavern? Sure, let's go. Right now. On that uh, well, right now we're about ten and a half minutes. So this is right. And I got you as uh, Clarence is right there. Yeah. yeah it is. Grandpa and Grandma. Oh. Claire is right here. Just ashes.